Hey everybody, this is Terry. I just want to touch base. I hope you guys are enjoying the video series. And again, the whole scenario with this is, is the main focus is to be paying attention to what we can do when it comes to using Python to control routers and switches. And I kind of apologize that we can't just dive right into the middle of that because we have to have a firm understanding of the data types in order to be able to do that. And that's what each of these individual video on demand series uh, recordings are about. Shortened forms to be able to walk you guys through how to use and manipulate the different data types because we use those to actually determine how and what networking devices that we're manipulating. So, you know, don't lose faith or don't lose hope here. It will ultimately start making sense as it relates to how we're going to be interacting with devices. But what I want to do is I want to look at a few things from the perspective of, let's say, we want to manipulate an output and let's go ahead and pretend that it does have something to do with some type of routing concept. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the console here and we are going to look at how we might be able to assign a value. So I, let's say I have a host name. I'm going to go ahead and copy that and I'll just paste this into my configuration. For those that want to follow along, I'm in, uh, in the introduction to strings.py file, section 81, uh, slice returns and new strings. And I'm specifically working at line 86. So if you want to copy and paste and follow along, follow along, feel free to just pause the video and get everything started. But what I've done is I've created a value here called hostname. And hostname corresponds to a 7K that's in my environment. So this is in 7K1 pod 5. There's also an in 7K2 for pod 5. Now what I want to do is I want to look at different ways that I can actually do this. So I can come on here and say hostname. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to start at 0 and I want to count 5 values over. So again, that's inclusive. I count 0 and you can see that's actually going to pull the 5 values that I asked for starting at 0. Now I could actually just leave the 0 off and what you'll see here is I get the exact same result because if I don't specify a value inside of a slashing computation to the left of the colon, what's going to end up happening is it's going to assume that I want to start from 0. Now the other thing, the truth of this is, is if I wanted to see the other half, so if I do hostname, and this is the other half, and I'm only interested in finding out, let's say, what pod this student is in. Well, what I could do is I could come over here and do the exact same thing, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to say start at 6 and leave the right column uh, space blank, and what that's actually going to do is that's going to pull the field. But the issue that we run into here is, is when we execute this, there's an odd little behavior. It did not start at the regular space. So if we say print out to 5, notice it stopped right at the hyphen. If I say from 6 forward, notice it's actually starting and ignoring the sixth value. So what I'd actually have to do here to see the full pod, I have to say five. So again, just an idiosyncrasy of the configuration. If What would happen if I included double brackets here or double colons? No, this is just going to present the entire value. Now, interestingly enough, remember when we did this length computation, when I come in here and said length, let's just do host name. And we see it's 10 characters long. And if I tried to index, so if I said um, host name and I said that I wanted to do an index at um, 10, I'm fine. Oh, sorry. host name 9, there it is, 5. So if I try to go to 10, you notice it's, it's giving me problems. Now I hit, in here I typed in 10, but remember in the values here we start counting at zero. There are a total number of 10 fields, however we start counting the fields at zero. And again, I'm trying to drive that point home. Well, what if I did something like this? Let's say I wanted to start at one and show me all 100 characters after that. Well, at first blush, especially when I was studying this, I thought that would fail, but actually it works. Because the, the beauty of doing this in slicing is, is that there's no requirement of no, uh, to know exactly how long the given string is going to be. Now, if you think about it, it makes sense. Because I, if I'm looking at the indexes, the indexes are actually part of the string value. However many characters are in a string, it's going to correspond to how many um, values are going to show up in the length. However, 
if I'm doing this is this here, there's no assumption. I'm saying start at the uh, the other at uh, the beginning and go out to the hundredth sp space. And if there's less than that, that's fine. Just show me what what is available. So again, that works out really well. Now, what if I didn't want to look at them sequentially? What if I had a value where I wanted to look at host name and I want to say start at one? And what I want to do is I want to go to the sixth field. But what I want to do is I want to see every other character. So I'll use begin, end, and count by this increment. So let's see what happens there. So notice that's 71p in the config. So 7, 1, we skipped the K, and we skipped the hyphen, and we printed the P. So again, another maybe never do anything with it whatsoever. However, we could have a, a need to be able to skip certain values. Again, I just want you guys to know that you can. So what if I started at 10 and I go to 1? Notice there's nothing to satisfy that requirement. Let's say what if I begin at 9 and go to 1? Nothing. What if I begin at um, 5 and go to 1? Well, see, the, the value here is that none of this is actually really working as far as being able to allow me to be able to produce an output. So again, it's got to be something that you're going to, you know, basically want to play with. So we start at index five. So which is an in index five? Host name, and I say five. What letter is that? Well, it's P. Well, if I say P colon one, I would expect that to count one, but it's not. What if I change this value to 2? It's not going to give me any, any indication or any value as far as being able to do that configuration or that count. Well, what if I did, let's say, let's say 10 and we go to 1? Let me see host name here. Let me make sure I didn't erase it. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Well, do I have 10 values? Remember, my length was 10. So if I do length and we do host name, it's 10. But remember, we start counting at zero. What if I say start counting at 10, and let's say I want to count backwards, negative, negative increments. Notice what, what that's doing for me. It's say K, one, pod, five. What did that do? It reversed my configuration. So let's say, um, 10 to 0. So in this instance, I'm starting at value 10, which doesn't exist, by the way, and I'm counting all the way down to 0, which does, and I'm going, I'm looking at everything from the perspective of reversing it. So it prints 5, dash, and then we go through, it's got D-O-P, dash, 1, K, 7, N. So in this instance, we've got 1, K, 7, but notice it's not hitting the N. I'm not seeing the end. Now, another way to do this without having to worry about making certain everything is spaced is the double colon. So if I come over here and say host name, and I say beginning and end of the string, go negative. Let's take a look at what happens here. This should actually work, and it should actually produce the end, which it does. So again, just because you have these values don't necessarily mean they're always going to be the go-to. And I would highly recommend you guys spend some time playing around with these and working with the different ways of being able to actually return new strings using this concept of slicing. Because again, we may need to actually have a just a subsection of a given string, and that string may be provided by querying a device. And if I query a router, my output may look different than if I query a switch, as far as looking at something like a show command. So again, please just play around with this. Again, we'll try to make this as real as possible, as quickly as possible, with regard to trying to manipulate information, and in the beginning, at least being able to look at show commands for devices. All right, so I'm Terry Vincent, and I'll see you guys in the next video.